Hello everyone. I hope you're well and welcome to this uh, section of the course which is about the type of institutional services that an institution might provide for subject matter experts that are developing MOOCs. Now this video is an introductory video for a set of videos and in this video we'll be looking at the need for institutional services uh, a general approach to their provision because remember what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep costs under control uh, and a lit list of issues that we're going to address in the rest of this section of the course the rest of the videos okay so why do we need institutional services well an institution may desire to produce many MOOCs uh, it may be part of the strategy of the institution to produce free open courses or there may be a demand from academic staff from lectures to develop free open courses uh, and they may weigh, wish to produce uh, give them assistance in this okay now the institution may have limited resources now this could be because they're a small institution or perhaps they're a bigger institution but they're unable to justify significant financial investment in it. Okay, now a very important reason is that the subject matter experts may not be very technically adept. They may not be particularly skilled at using computers and specialized software. And they may not prioritize this in terms of their skills development. They may feel that they have better things to do than to learn to use specialized software systems. So these are reasons why we might need institutional services to assist academics in developing MOOCs. Right, an approach to a solution. How might we go about doing this so that we can keep costs under control? Well, the first idea, and I have two ideas here for you. The first idea is division of labor. Really we don't need people to be developing skills that they will rarely use. It's better off to have specialized people to do things that they will do a lot. Our subject matter experts are experts in, in content and possibly they have some expertise in content development in the form of PowerPoint slides, that type of thing, and some expert in delivery and being able to talk and present. But other than that, they most likely don't have the other skills that are necessary to build content and to build a MOOC. They may not have instructional design skills, they may not be capable of editing videos or assembling content onto a, a learning platform, they may not have quality assurance skills. Okay now the second idea I would like to propose is simplification. We're trying to cut costs here so we need to absolutely be ruthless in removing unnecessary work. Um, this could be in content development. Now, the most complex content development is probably video. It doesn't take a lot of work, but it probably it requires some specialized skills. There are other content as well that they may need assistance with, quizzes, assignments, etc. So content development is one area where we may need to simplify things. But the other area is in terms of people working together the communication between members of a team and the workflow process. We may need to simplify that and we may need to sacrifice certain objectives because we need that simplification and lowering of cost. Okay, so the issues we're going to look at in the next in the rest of this section in the next few videos are first of all the provision of hardware, software, some centralized facilities and support services. The next thing will be on the division of labor, who does what best. And we will talk a little bit about quality assurance, how we can build that into it without increasing the workload by too much. And workflow, how are we gonna design the moving of tasks from one person to the other and the passing of information so we don't increase significantly the amount of work involved. We want to minimize wasting people's time. Okay, thanks for listening or watching and uh, I hope you enjoy the next few videos and find them useful. Bye for now.